Welcome back to part three of going around the UK in a very small speedboat. We're in Paynton, a glorious seaside town where we're going to be doing a few refinements to the boat before we head out again to go around the UK. Before we set sail on this next leg, we're going to be adding a few little improvements. Um, this is a bit like the fourth bridge. I'm basically fixing the bits I didn't quite do properly the first time around. <laughs> this is a very exciting moment because this boat has needed a proper cover for a long time and rain's been getting in but no more because this is the pattern being patterned. Is this the pattern? This is the pattern. The pattern yeah. yeah, this is the pattern. <laughs> Look at that, so the rain's going to run off here, so it's going to be classy. Maybe the yellow could be good. It would be jolly, wouldn't it? It would also match my jumper. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Basically, we're going to go with the yellow like your jumper. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to look very smart. It's hailing. <laughs> <laughs> I love gadgets. Uh, I spoke to Raymarine and they've given me a load of new ones. So now I've got to rebuild the whole dashboard to try and fit everything in. And this is the new one. Right, emptying all the dashboard. It's all coming out. Right, what a mess. Will it fit? That's the question. It's very rainy doing, it, doing the soldering. I spent a long time on the old dashboard, um, but I did scrimp on some of the uh, bits and bobs. Uh, so this is really the dashboard of my dreams. On it goes. Number of engines, one. This is very nice, it's all working. It's beautiful, isn't it? <coughs> Whoever designed that, Harry? Woo. So I should have a career in... Um, Dashboard design. Dashboard design, <laughs> yeah. Eddie's here, he's just doing the last bits of um, tinkering. Cable management. He's doing cable management. Uh, our LED floodlight has uh, broken because it's very cheap from eBay. So I learned my lesson, I bought another one very cheap from eBay. <laughs> right, let's get cracking. Today's the day we're going to be heading around to Dartmouth. Taking our trusty spare apple. Cover is here. Look at the yellow. Oh wow. Looks great. Thank you so much. Oh, I love the curve on the back here. Hopefully it fits first go. God, it looks so inviting, doesn't it? Sort of the icy on the cake. This is Dave. <laughs> Dave's come to pick us up. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I'm local. Yeah, I live well, uh, at Bay Hospital. Spent all my life down in Paint and Harbour. Just, there's a bit that, uh, like, as you're pr approaching Dartmouth, there's a, like an island, and um, it looks like you can go through it, but there's all cardinal marks around it. Right. Just keep outside of them and you'll be fine. That's good advice. We'd yeah. definitely be like, yeah, I'll get through yeah, that. Yeah, like you can get through <laughs> it. We might try and get to Plymouth on Monday. Yeah. Anything we should look for in, on the way down Start there? Start Point can get a bit nasty. Right. Same as Portland Bill, really. Them two. Yeah. Two are a bit, like if the tide's running, it can. Right, so we want to hit it at sort of yeah, slack water. Yeah, slack water, yeah. Start Point's not very nice. Right. <laughs> Come on in, Eddie. Try not to rip the dashboard off. <sighs> Thanks, Dave. Sorry. Thank you, Dave. Sorry. I feel bad that you're not getting to have a ride. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Okay, yeah, that's good. How's it look, Harry? Lovely. Thank you. That was a lucky one. You nearly went over your wellies there. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We're off! Okay, we just 
just going to go out and have a look because anchored out in the bay out here is an old tall ship. It's a um, Danish naval training vessel with the classic old three masted sailing ship. A lot of big ships come into this bay to harbour when uh, there's bad weather out the sea. Are you nervous about launching over? Okay, we're up. Textbook. So that's Brixham over there. It's beautiful. It's Brix ham. Oh, Brix ham. Brix and mm. ham. Mm. Is it because traditionally they made bricks and ham? Yes. Mm. Right, we're just coming around Berry Head now. I have to say, this new Raymarine stuff is really great, Eddie. Yeah, here on uh, Goodwin, we like to use Raymarine for all our navigational purposes. Dolphin, my friend, uh, just over here. I definitely saw a black shape pop up. Just seen a dolphin. Oh, there he is. That was it, I saw him there, look. There he goes. It's gonna take us around Cod Rock here. It's raining, so we've had to resort to crawlies. Oh, he's getting a little bit bigger, aren't we? Oh, yeah. It's cozy in here, Eddie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Hey, Eddie, would you like a snack? <laughs> have we got some snacks on board? We have some snacks. Yeah, we Dodger. Yes, Eddie, would you like one of these? Yeah, would. Jammy Dodgers! <laughs> Thanks. Well, it's a little choppier than we anticipated. Oh, big wave. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sat in a puddle of water. <laughs> Your fingers freezing? A uh, little, not too bad, wet. The whole dashboard is an absolute treat. Um, I'm feeling very pleased with myself. So we're heading to Dartmouth, where we should be staying in a castle. Eddie, would you like a scotch? One of us got the better gear than the other. Hey, you've got good gear. Uh, these trousers are very dry, those are not so good. Yeah. We've made it to Dartmouth and um, the castle which we will be staying in because for the weekend we will be castle dwellers. Uh, up here is Kingsweir Castle which um, dates back to 1491. Uh, so now we need to work out how we can actually get on there because it's big rocks and it's a bit choppy. Hopefully we can scramble up those steps. Tides right out. You know what, what about just here? Here we are at the castle to Kingswear. We will be having a medieval weekend. Some little steps there, we could maybe scramble up, but these rocks are big. Although the dream was to just scramble aboard the castle, I think it's gonna be more fun if we just go to uh, the marina. Eddie? To the marina. To the marina, engage. Ah, where are you going, 
City. Castle themed again. Here they are. Hello. So should we try putting the cover on as well? We got the cover on. At least freezing. freezing. That's looking pretty jazzy though. We're just making the slow walk back. Steps. Right, we've arrived at the castle. This way, my liege. Heady to the castle. Hurry. Is it open? Here we go in castle food. As everyone knows, it's baked beans, uh, sausages, cheese on toast. It's what people have in castles. The king. What's the king of the castle? I'm the king of the castle, I think. And I'm a dirty rascal. <laughs> There's a storm outside. You know it's haunted, Harry. Look <laughs> at No, don't. <laughs> don't scare me, Eddie. Don't scare me, Eddie. We're going up. It's a long way down there, Harry. Eddie, Ugh. it's dark in here. Ugh. What time is it? Maybe eight. Down here. My lord! Isn't that a perfect inlet here, look? Do you think you could get in that gap? So we've got the oars, we can push off the rocks. Yeah. This castle was built just after the one on the other side of the river. So that's Dartmouth Castle, this is Kingswick Castle, and this one was built just after they built that one. This castle's pretty old. Henry VIII was born on the very year that this was built. Shakespeare wouldn't be born for 60 years. They formed part of the same state-of-the-art defences system, this new technology of putting heavy artillery inside a building. The ground floor where they housed the biggest guns had 10 gun ports. Three on this side, four on the front, two on the back. As technology improved, it quickly became obsolete. It kind of fell into disrepair. It's since been restored by the Landmark Trust to um, preserve ancient buildings and uh, they fund it by renting them out so people like us can uh, stay in them. It was used briefly in the uh, English Civil War and then didn't see any action again until World War II when they built a machine gun emplacement up in the garden. So this was built in the Second World War and I guess it uses the same good vantage point to um, cover this whole area. The support team are here. All right there. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> support team are here enjoying the, the uh, delights of the castle. Good mobile reception. Very good. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Go, 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 go. Team Goodwin, go. 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 Covers held out really well. We're going against the tide here, Harry. Just heading up river to uh, a little pub. Weather's not the best, but um, it's March, so you know what can you expect? I think I've got scurvy. Really? Mm. <laughs> Too long to see. The green hills of England. So we're going to the pub up here. 
That's, where, that's the house that Walter Raleigh grew up in, the man who discovered the potato. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, Agatha Christie lived there. Greenway House, it's called. So that is Agatha Christie's boat house. The boat, isn't it? Should we go and have some chips? The support team are here. Hello. Look at the pint, Harry. You're gonna get. Thank you very much. Cheers mm. to victory. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Sir Walter Riley and his uh, potato. <laughs> so we're in Dittersham, and on the other side of the river is Greenway, where um, Agatha Christie lives. But the ferry service that runs between these two is. Um, very ancient, has been running since 1086 or something like that. It was reported in the Doomsday Book. But it's just a small boat that runs back and forth, taking people to and from Agatha Christie's house. Oh, steam train! Comfy, Liz. It's actually all right behind the windscreen, isn't it? Yeah. Keeps the worst off. Luxurious. Yeah. The castle was built to defend Dartmouth because at the time it was a real center for shipbuilding and kind of military shippy type things. And Ben's lightship, which is in the foam mining video, was actually built by Phillips and Sons, which used to be just around the corner in Dartmouth. That company's no longer there, but there is still some boat building in Dartmouth and there's a company who are building ribs, just like Goodwin, although I think maybe more expensive. Yeah, I look at this, it's so ginormous. It's an absolute beast. God, look at it. Got twin Yamaha 300 V6s, so 600, plenty of power. You know, you can pu push it pretty hard. Try get on. Get on, Eddie. Harold oh, Megan's graceful entry. Oh, look at the wood. There we go. It's <laughs> so luxurious. It's amazing, the uplighting. We need to get some of these LEDs on Goodwin, don't we? So it's a full Garmin. Full Garmin. Bluetooth. Got a stereo system on here. Wow. There's your Yamaha gauges and your VHF on there. There we go, simple as that. So yeah, it's a lot like Goodwin being on board. doing like 60 miles an hour. Oh my! The speed! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's just... mental, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we were airborne for some of it. Yeah. When you hear the pitch change, that means we're, the whole boat's out of the water and the propellers are right. spinning it's in the air. Yeah. Like, oh, my head was up there. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, Eddie. Are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> that was going some. It, yeah. It's so smooth and quiet at the yeah, same time, isn't it? Because of the length of it as well, though. Every time you leave a wave, the stone's like almost in the water anyway before the battery, Right. So. Yeah. It's a bit of a different experience, mm. isn't it? A little. I mean, you'd get around the UK pretty quickly in this, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, uh, who, who's going to have a, a try first? <laughs> Don't kill us, Eddie. Hey, I'll just take it. Give, give me a rundown. Yeah. Yeah. What about at the back? Am I going to just fly off? You'll be okay there because it's a real nice high backrest, so we'll right. cut you in, but we won't go as fast as we can. No, did. no, okay, oh, yeah. Set up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's so relaxing, isn't it? Yeah. I'll do it. 
Oh, there we go. It's quite. <laughs> hey! It's quite. Yeah, it's quite, quite sensitive. Yeah, yeah. You don't just want to go straight to flat out. Oh, no. You guys should come around and come and see it. Yeah, lovely. You need a big trailer, don't you? <laughs> Did you enjoy that, Eddie? I think I'm gonna have a bit of a sore hand from white knuckle gripping. <laughs> uh... It shouldn't be allowed, there, should it? Should it? Be illegal. <laughs> This is um, the twin brother Danny. <laughs> but Eddie and Harry here, the YouTube Ribbers. Hello. Well, RIB stands for Rigid Inflatable Boat. So effectively, the inflatable part is the inflatable tube that'll go around the outer side, and the rigid part is the hull. Inside this white box, effectively, that's our heat controlled environment. So effectively, it's our oven. So we're making a eight meter hull at the moment. There's a smaller version of what we went out on earlier and they'll directly inject the resin in, inside the mold. Yes, yeah, so it's a foam core laminate structure in there. It creates a thicker hull whilst keeping the weight down. Oh right, it's a dashboard. Right. Hello, right. it's a dashboard. Glove box. Glove box. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been making my uh, dashboard. Oh yeah. Our boat. yeah. They're yeah. going around Britain in a four meter mm. Avon. I've just come in See, dark. I love the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love that kind of stuff. I said it to you. Yes. Yeah. Wait, well, you'll be on it now, won't you? Yeah. 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 Oh, excellent. Yeah. Right, four meter sea rider. Recoup quite a few of those. Oh yeah. Mm. Right up the front. Yes. The yeah. Side the by orange side. bow dodger. Yeah. <laughs> This is the console moulding to create the sort of ergonomics in the moulding so your knees can go underneath it You wouldn't be able to pop it out with a single moulding. They'll laminate the, the moulding then they'll have to the split and basically take the moulding apart to get the, uh, the, the, the piece out. All of the big boats uh, and all the big mouldings are on wheels so when uh, a hull's been made effectively we'll push the mould out of here using the gantry crane we'll lift them out of the mouldings onto a dolly like this. Here we've got another eight metre. This boat is off to Monaco fairly soon. It's got some pretty spicy seats pistachio green. Oh wow, look at that. If you like your pistachios. Nuts. And through here, I think we've got some other boats to be finished. These sort of big ribs we've been looking at, they're usually from about 100k. Right. Can get up to about 200k. You know, they're made to order, so they're building something bespoke and unique to them. They're sort of luxury day boats. So they'll be chase boats, they'll follow the super yacht, the yacht will drop its anchor, then that's their mode of transport to shore. These are 400 horsepower. Wow. So here we have an example of some of the super yacht tenders we build. So this is actually a certified lifeboat. So if this boat was upside down, we'd swim up to it, we'd pull this lever here, there'd be an inflation bag on the top of here which would inflate, no. and actually means that the rib self, self rights itself. Fleur's got an 811 on here, as you can see. Look at this, I like a 3D model. You go through different colour options, deck layouts. Why do you put Goodwin on the tube? <laughs> yeah. What would you have on your one? Uh, Battle Trooper, of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the latest. <laughs> of course. The what gaming kind of console. Si but what, yeah, yeah, you want a gaming computer on your Yeah, you yeah, that's what I think. Can you do that? What, a gaming computer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one for the book, that one. <laughs> It'd be hard to use the mouse, though, when yeah. you're going really fast. <laughs> This boat's near completion, so it's got the tube on, the seats are going. Do you think that we could water ski behind Goodwin? Is it possible? I think you'd want a wakeboard. I, don't, I think because the ski's so thin. A wakeboard, I think you could do it. Yeah. Well, I'll be putting my order in. Um, <laughs> thanks for the ride. My pleasure. That's been a lot of fun and terrifying, but yeah. brilliant at the same time. Someone's got to clean up, Harry. It's all baths and boat riding. <laughs> For the king, it is. <laughs> it's got a lovely line in there. Well, it's a rainy day. Mm. Are you a bit nervous about going out tomorrow? It's looking pretty grim out there now. Apparently, in medieval times, they did used to bring boats to the castle. 
You can see here, this is where they used to bring boats in and there are still steps carved in here. Tomorrow we're going to try and get the boat in through this tiny gap and bring it in here and load it up. Potentially the boat might get popped on these rocks, but um, it's got to be worth a try though. And then there's steps all the way up and this is a really nice set carved in here. Everybody know what to do? Amen. So do you think we can get the boat in here? We can definitely get the boat in there. Is it going to pop? <laughs> Is the question is, are we going to get it out again? Mm. It's coming in. <laughs> it's definitely coming in. <laughs> Lovely sunny day tomorrow. Yeah. All right, my go? Yeah, you'll go. Morning. Let's head to Plymouth. To Plymouth! Do you think we need waterproof trousers? Uh, I think it's a good idea. The big breakfast, Harry. The big push. As this cruise ship comes in, you can really imagine whipping around your uh, cannon on the second floor to the starboard cannon port and just taking a few shots. Possibly uh, battleships wouldn't have been as big in those days, but that is an easy target, even with a Short range, old school cannon. Look at all these gun ports, look. You can see how basically you could cover every angle. Load! Fire! I like the way these ones are angled off as well, down here, like this one. I suppose you could have two, couldn't you? You could, like, like, as the boat comes around this side, you've got one here and you've got one here. Once you pass that window, mm. that one seals firing. And this one. Do you think this was a bigger gun here, going straight out? This is long range. Maybe yeah, that's for the long range out to sea shots. Mm. This is for the close quarters. <laughs> Down here. <laughs> Again! Fire! <laughs> Have you got a card to buy from? Harry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, lock them up. Keys. Aim. Fire! Thank you very much for having us. No problem. Our hosts. Yeah, you're welcome. Alright, see you next time. It's another sea rider with prop guard. There she is, she's ready to go. Beauty. I've been dry. Oh, it's perfect in there, look at that. Dartmouth heading out to Plymouth but before we do we're just going to see if we can pick up our stuff and um, get the boat in the pool. Goodwin is in the pool. Right, we've just got to try and get the uh, boat out of here now. Dangerous work. I'll tell you what, why don't you put that on? Oh, shit, grab it. Well, there you go. So the life jackets are working really well. <laughs> so that was a great test. Okay, well, we got a backup life jacket from Ribeye. Somewhere away, John. Yeah, get out the surf. Ooh, that much. <laughs>
We're just passing Slaps and Sands, famously the site of a World War II tragic disaster. More people lost their lives here in a training exercise than in the first day of the D-Day invasion. Slaps and Sands is a perfect uh, training ground for the D-Day landings. They'd have landing craft coming in here. Um, well, that was the plan until the communication mishap and then some live ammunition landing a bit too close to them. And then they got torpedoed. Um, bit of a, yeah, it's one of the worst training accidents for the Second World War. There's a tank that's actually been pulled out that was in one of the landing craft um, that's sitting on the beach over there. Carry on. Yeah. So we're heading out to Start Point, which is the kind of big jutting out bit of land out here, which apparently can get a bit choppy. Is that orange juice or Coke? What do you want? I'm... What do you like about the taste of Coca Cola and Snickers, Eddie? Uh, it's the original flavour of uh, summertime. Oh, we got mini ones. This is like the good times before the disaster hits, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're just rounding Start Point. This is uh, quite a big peninsula that sticks out down here and uh, notoriously choppy, but it seems to be okay. We're just going into Sulcum just to um, have a look around. We made it to Sulcum, uh, but there's no bloody parking, so let's go. If you thought Dartmouth was posh, check out Sulcum. This is Berg Island. It's not really an island. At low tide, it's linked by a big stretch of sand. Famous for its hotel, which was um, Agatha Christie's favourite hotel, who we saw her house earlier in the River Dart. It's all kind of 1920s. Probably a few whodunits have happened on there. I think maybe she wrote some of her books there. A few people have probably been murdered there um, with, I don't know, like a fountain pen or something like that. But it's connected at low tide by this sandy beach, which we're just slowly washing onto at 4.7 feet. <laughs> I'm just going to turn around. It's quite shallow, but it's all right. The depth gauge is working. It says eight foot there. Foot. This is our final stretch to Plymouth now.
run out of fuel. So Eddie's cold and he said, I don't want to do any more filming of ships or anything. I want to go back. We're nearly there. We use way more fuel in the rough weather, basically. I'm going to do the old quick fuel changeover. Yeah, it's empty. We are back on. That all the, the crowds up there. Good wind, good wind. Coming really fast. Oh, this is fast. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> Are you feeling a little cold? These guys have got a huge boat storage system, a bit like that scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark where they uh, store the ark at the end in the big shed. <laughs> Look at that, it's so quick. So this is a good way of storing a lot of boats in a big dry warehouse, rather than sticking it on an old trailer in the front garden. These guys emailed us and very kindly said, when we get to Plymouth, we can use their dry stacks where they stack boats very high. It's basically this huge, ginormous valet parking boat system. <laughs> Look at it, it's going so high. They're getting rid of all the salt. Amazing. <laughs> They're getting rid of all the salt for us. 